fashion to boost the economy of a rural town located in eastern Kentucky. Every day, more and more people experience the benefits of TV products. In 2018, 230,000 acres of hemp were grown for CBD production. This created a market value at $3 billion. Over the next five years, that market value is estimated to increase to an astounding $2.2 trillion. Those type girls feel it's their responsibility as future leaders of Eastern Kentucky and the nation to increase the community's well-being. So these girls created Bluegrass Hemp. Bluegrass Hemp will be a business focused on the production of hemp clones in greenhouses to combat seed shortages for hemp growers. In Bluegrass Hemp's first year of production, we aim to grow 3 million hemp clones for an estimated value of $3.3 million and a return on investment of 22%. This is why you should invest in Bluegrass Hemp. Let's talk about the environment. Our site is located in Lee County, Kentucky. The site was purchased in 2003 and mined until 2005 by Surgeon Mining Company in Bayville, Kentucky. During mining, approximately 150 acres of land was moved. Surgeon Mining Company is directed and operated by Mr. Edward Courier. Just for approximation, an acre is the size of a football field. Surgeon Mining Company employed 10 employees over the time of mining for this specific site. Mr. Courier did not elaborate on the amount of salaries that was paid. The site was, however, mined through contour mining and produced mainly amberberry, gelco coal, and blue gem coal. The main uses for these coal is all manufactured. The community impact during mining was mostly economic. Taxes and severance taxes were paid. As you can see in the maps illustrated above, this is the map of the United States showing severance, severance tax incomes in states across the country. And this map shows, as you can see in this map, it shows the area in which we're located, which is this severely heavily used area for taxes. The environments of our site was provided by the Kentucky Department of Wildlife. The site is likely to have species such as you've seen pictured above, such as deer, woodcock, game, and other non-game species. Most of these species are not dangerous, but because of the presence of berries on the site, black bears are possible in the area. There are no historical water or vegetation issues surrounding the site that needs to be addressed. However, there are tall grasses and autumn olive berries, as said before, that could attract bears and also provide a habitat for animals. Vegetation includes many, many different types of plants to track the animals. Pictures are some pictures of the site's vegetation. The water utilities on the site. The South Fork River borders the site on this side, which is the left side of this picture. It surrounds the site, moving around the top. There are no current structures on the site. However, there are two main power lines running diagonal to the ridge. And both this road and within the site we plan to develop in this area. Bluegrass Hemp will redevelop approximately five acres of the site, as pictured above, to provide three greenhouses and an office building for our production. As you can see, this picture at the top, which shows first, that's the area of development, the greenhouse area, and then the office building area. Last year, 230,000 acres of CBD hemp was planted, bringing the market to $3 billion. This market is expected to grow exponentially, and this has created a seed and clone shortage. The closing of the mine has also resulted in a loss of jobs. Bluegrass Hemp aims to fill the market need by providing clones to farmers and wholesale manufacturers, and Bluegrass Hemp hopes to bring jobs back to a much deserving community. Bluegrass Hemp aims to redevelop an unused, unfertile, and isolated coal mine and turn it into greenhouses that will be focused on the production of hemp clones, specifically hemp clones that will be extracted for CBD oil. This is a timeline of Bluegrass Hemp's business goals ranging from 2021 to 2024. In June 2021, we will begin construction of the greenhouses in the office space. 
In September, through October, the weekly war, we would love to obtain licenses and start to enjoy staff. In January to March 2022, we would like to acquire the motor the plants and begin the cloning process. And in 2023 and 2024, we would like to expand to 3.5 million clones and then to 5 million clones. And Bluegrass Sims will produce super clones. What this means is our clones are superior to the competitors because we will have a higher purity product and we will guarantee a higher yield for our buyers. This is a diagram of our organizational structure of our business. So, marketing. So, Bluegrass Hemp aims to sell to wholesale distributors. We're going to sell one third of our clones, or one million of our clones, to wholesale distributors for profit. And then we're going to sell two thirds of our clones, or two million of our clones, to individual farmers. But the end goal should be a total of 3 million clones sold, even though those ratios may change due to market and customer debate. So customers of Bluegrass Hemp are individual farmers who will take our clones and grow them into full-size plants. And then they can use those plants to sell to wholesale distributors who can then derive CBD oil from them. And benefits for our users includes economic growth, high CBD oil purity, and clones better suited for the grow region. So representatives and networking. Having a sales representative is crucial as a startup business. This is crucial in networking and building our marketing. So Bluegrass Hemp plans to employ a marketing representative who will go to conferences in Kentucky and surrounding states. So industry analysis. The CBD market was valued at about $3 billion in 2018, and that CBD market is estimated to grow at a compound annual growth rate of about 126%. And then in the next five years, it will grow to about $2.2 trillion. So why 3 million hemp clones? That sounds like a really big, like extravagant number. However, for every 3 million hemp clones, only 1,383 acres of hemp can be used and derived for CBD oil. So in 2018, Kentucky planted um, 230,000 acres of hemp. And then in 2020, it's estimated that 600,000 acres of hemp will be grown. So we will only be growing 1,383 acres of hemp. That's only a small fraction of that total number. So competitor greenhouses. You can see here that our competitors have really large greenhouses compared to what we're planning here on our model. We're only planting three greenhouses, 35 by 40 feet. So some competitors like Color Point Kentucky, Grundy Hemp Co, and Hemp Industry have really large facilities, and that's because they go through the full extraction process. They grow their clones into full-grown plants, and then they derive the CBD oil, they dry their plants, everything like that, and they transport them out to their customers. We will not be doing that. We will only be growing our clones. So we're going to have a smaller facility ensuring higher purity standards because we'll have a lower plant to employee ratio than our competitors. Also, our competitors are located in northern and central Kentucky, which are more economically stimulated than eastern Kentucky. Um, I would feel comfortable saying that eastern Kentucky was more devastated economically by the devastation of the coal industry than central and northern Kentucky because I'm from eastern Kentucky and so are some of my teammates here. Um, Leanna here is from Reddit County and me and Haley are from Perry County. So we have witnessed this firsthand. And I would like to say that Bluegrass Hemp will directly improve the economy of Eastern Kentucky through the sales of our hemp clones. So some of our strengths, this is our SWOT analysis. Some of our strengths include the use of our greenhouse. It will reduce the risk of crop failure due to pests or anything like that. And also, I find it very innovative that we use greenhouses because a lot of people would say using reclaimed coal mine lands for agriculture um, isn't possible. They may say that the soil may not be um, able to be used. We saw that the soil on our side was not able to be used to grow plants directly in. So we innovated and said, let's build greenhouses on it instead. We can still use it for agriculture because that's what Babyville is experienced in. So um, specialized production of only clones is also a strength. We are only growing baby plants, which means when we sell them to farmers and wholesale distributors, they can gain profit from that too. So it's more economically stimulating. And the production for a specific grow region is also a strength. 
because not only can we sell to Kentucky farmers, we can also sell to surrounding states. So that includes Tennessee, Virginia, um, Indiana, and Ohio. And then some of our weaknesses would be lack of experience. Although Babyville residents are experienced in agriculture, many people have family farms, they are not used to growing hemp clones here. And specialized production of only clones may also be a weakness as well as a strength because we are not growing full plants like our competitors. We're not going through that full process. And then shortages of trained workers because, as I said before, Babyville residents are not experienced in working with hemp clones. However, we do aim to give them internships and other things that we'll talk about later. Um, so opportunities. The industry is growing rapidly. I mean, in the next five years, we have an estimated market growth of $2.2 trillion. That's huge. Um, so that means that we've got plenty of room to come in since it's a new market and make our business. So seed shortages increase demand for clones. Um, that's the entire reason that we're growing clones, because we're having seed shortages. That's why we're not selling seeds or full plants or anything like that. And then new growers are entering the market. That's an opportunity because since it's a growing market, you know, we might have some competitors, but we're fairly new to this as they are too. And then threats, new entrants. We can't stop new entrants. However, we are going to have a lot of customer loyalty. We're going to build relationships with our customers. We're going to ensure that they are enjoying our product. What can we improve for you? You know, and we want to have a lot of customers in Babyville. We want to help impoverished areas in eastern Kentucky that have been hit by the devastation of the coal industry. So regulations being enacted that lower production, such as laws um, against how much THC may be present in your clones. Um, hemp has CBD oil and THC in it. Um, and we have to maintain a low percentage to be able to sell our products. However, because we've got a lower employee to plant ratio than our competitors, we can ensure that we're not going to go over those regulations. And then declining economy and possible recession um, due to like some short term issues such as coronavirus impacting businesses and things like that. But we hope that those would be um, resolved shortly. So, Bluegrass Camp has a monthly budget of $5,000 to put toward ads and marketing that are specifically targeted to our before mentioned targeted customers, which are wholesale manufacturers and individual farmers. This $5,000 will also be used in some of our community outreach programs, and it's going to be adjusted as our business grows, changes, so on and so forth. So, as a business, we are specifically located in a rural area that was primarily economically stimulated by the coal mining industry. Bluegrass hemp will contribute to the community and economy of Blue County, Kentucky in a variety of ways. The most obvious being the economic growth that our business brings with it. So the average household income in Lee County, Kentucky is $24,000 a year, which is $30,000 less than the national average. And if any of you have been to Lee County, Kentucky, you guys can attest that the poverty rate is very high. So we plan to hopefully combat this by paying our two full-time office employees a salary of $55,000 a year starting out and our 40 part-time seasonal workers, $12 an hour. Um, so in addition to this, our company will generate $1.8 million in taxes within the first year of production. These taxes will in turn be poured into public roads, public programs, public schools, and so on. So the other indirect way that we contribute to the economy is the CBD oil itself. Although we don't extract it, it is ultimately the end goal of the clones that we are producing. Um, it has a multitude of Benefits to it, but people are still fairly uneducated, as we mentioned earlier, with one of our threats to our business. So, in a way to combat this, we are hoping to incorporate hemp education into the FFA programs in the area. Um, I am from Breathitt County, which borders Lee County. I have been in contact with my agriculture teacher um, in researching ways to incorporate hemp education into the FFA programs that are already in place. And as our business grows, we do hope to expand that to every school in the region. Um, oh. <laughs> So we also plan to set up scholarships and internships to people interested not only in the hemp industry, but also just in agriculture. Um, so we hope to have internships where our employees, if they would want to go on to hire greenhouses, we want to set them up for success. So, and then our marketing representatives will also have cooking sessions at the local 4-H extension office. This needs to be the most popular event hosted at that specific 4-H office. Um, so this will be a way to not only educate the community about what our company is, what the benefits of CBD oil are, and 
everything else that we're trying to do for the community, but it's also going to be a way for us to kind of outreach and recruit employees for our community because we do want to employ local people as much as we can. So. And finally, arguably the most important part of any business, we're going to talk about the finances. So funding, Bluegrass Hip will seek a $2 million loan, and while we do not have a direct uh, estimate from a bank determining whether we could get this loan or not, we are very confident in our prices and we are very confident that we would be able to secure this loan. Um, all of the costs and all the revenue projections that you will see today in the finance slide were made and helped uh, created by Philip Spark, which is a current producer located in Owington, Kentucky. So they should be as accurate as possible. For our profit, we hope to bring in a revenue of $7.5 million in our first production year. And this is broken down by 1 million of our um, clones being sold to wholesale and 2 million being sold to individual farmers. And after taxes, we can expect to make about $3.3 million. So a pretty good profit. In our long-term projections, we have revenue of $8.6 million in year two, $9.9 million in year three, $11.4 million in year four, and finally $13 million in year five. For our return on investment after our second year, because we're just building stuff our first year, we will have a return of 22.8%. And as you can see in the chart, we will continue to grow our return on investment as our costs go down and we increase production. For our break even, we will break even in our second year of production, and that will be at 27% of our guns sold. So it is very realistic to assume that we will break even. In the long term, we have to increase production by around 10% each year. This will help us support our products as we go. We also hope to pay back our loans and maybe future investors within our first five years of production. We hope that this will allow us to remain debt free and use our profits to invest directly into growing our business. We would like to thank everyone that has helped us throughout this process, and we will now open the floor for questions. With the um, under SWOT analysis, mm -hmm. under the um, one of them, kind of the, the weakness and skills in terms of actually growing the product. How do you expect to gain that expertise or to learn that process um, to grow um, very specifically for markets that meet the, the um, medicinal compound levels that you're trying to reach? Um, how do you plan to either grow that expertise within your team or to hire or bring that expertise onto your company? Specifically within our company, we do have a good working knowledge of how this industry works and the agricultural industry surrounding him. We have been in contact with several growers to ensure that we understand the process and the way to go about breeding these set clones and buying the plants. In our first few years of production, these plants will be acquired through a buyer, so we will actually buy the plants that we will be cloning, and then as we move along, we will uh, expand that expertise to actually modify these specifically to our business. So this will be um, in our stage of uh, development, as you saw in year five, the stage of expansion is when we will actually be modifying those clones to, in terms of uh, purity standards, but we feel very confidently that we can get within we can get well above the purity standards established today with the clones we have contact with. And just to bounce off of that, we will import a board of advisors, which will help us ensure that all of those standards are met and that we go into this with a um, good industry knowledge and a good industry base based on experience from current producers. In terms of threat, um, the legal aspect also it's my understanding that CBD also contain, often contains THC, and I know some CBD growers whose plants have been confiscated, annoyingly they, they did have some THC, and they lost a significant amount of money. How do you anticipate or deal with this kind of threat? Um, so, uh, 
it may seem like I'm talking to question space, but I'm the agricultural specialist for this project. So um, specifically within CBD production, the federal law regulates that to 0.3%, which it, uh, that would be contained within the compound level of THC. This would be considered maximum amount that you can have, otherwise they will be confiscated. Throughout the cloning process, we test the plants to ensure that we are preventing from that happening. And if it, when we buy the mother plants, so when you clone the plant, it actually is a, an exact replica of the mother plant in which it was cloned from. So those plants have been tested ahead of time to ensure that the plants that are cloned do not exceed those levels. Yes, and to elaborate on what my colleague said, for those of you who don't know, CBD was recently legalized in 2018, I think the bill was passed, if I'm correct. So it is a fairly new industry. Just wanted to add that to that. Specifically, selling the clones to growers, I guess, in the spring for planting. Will it just be a seasonal business after you sell your clones? Will we be done for the year, or how will that work? So for our first five years, all of the projections that you saw in all of our planning is just to produce in one grow season. What we would love to grow into producing year round and then selling those to other more or less traditional markets. But in order to do that, we need to have the foundation in the market and we need to be able to support that production year round. So as of now, we will only be producing seasonally. Yes, and with the employees that will be seasonal employees with the internships that I had mentioned, we hope to have internships set up with greenhouses who have differing off seasons than us, so our employees will still be in work. We will also be involved in the community with community outreach events as well. Uh, Illinois has legalized medical marijuana, and Ohio, I believe, is moving towards uh, medicinal. Uh, how will that affect your? So uh, the medical marijuana directly will affect our business. However, the production of CBD is used in a variety of pharmaceuticals that the production of THC is not. So while it will have some impact, we could use that off season to produce that if it was legalized. We would not be that would not directly uh, impact our business heavily. And to add on to what she said. Disorders such as um, autism can be treated with CBD oil while they can be helped, not treated. Um, such as speaking disorders and stuff, that can be helped, which medical marijuana cannot. Um, something I don't know, so maybe you guys know or somebody else knows it. Do you guys have to be, and maybe after you guys, so you're selling the whole centers, is there an FDA regulation? So there is a lot of regulations in terms of selling the actual oil, but since we are not actually growing these plants out, we are minimizing our risk and our regulations by only growing clones. Um, just to ping pong off that, one of the major uh, hurdles for hemp and CBD growers in Kentucky and specifically in the United States is that you must be 18 to actually cultivate those plants, and that's the biggest regulation that we face in our business. Thank you guys for sitting here and listening to this pitch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.